Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to less than one of the volume topic in a National Five Expressions and Formula. We're going to look today at volume of a prism. Okay, now before we start, there's just a couple of things I want to look at in terms of what we should know coming in. Okay, so here we've got uh, six areas that I think you should know. Now, the top three especially, the rectangle, the triangle and the circle are three ones that I would think you should have to know inside out. You need to know how to do these. And it's not a case of having to think about it. It's just second nature. Okay, so rectangle, triangle and circle, know these. The bottom three are a little bit more niche, but technically there are stuff in the National 5 course that they can be asked about because they are covered in the National 4. Uh, I've not seen them anywhere near as much though, so I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Okay, now, what we're going to look at today is volume of a prism. Now, you'll have heard the word prism before. Probably when you're talking about triangular prisms, which is the shape of the box for your Toblerones. Okay, now, the thing that makes something a prism is that cross-section of that front face, like with the hexagonal prism here. As it moves through the shape, it doesn't change. It's constant. Okay, now that is a thing that makes something a prism. The examples I like to use in my class are Billy Bear Meat, the fantastic processed meat you can get from Asda's. No matter where you cut Billy Bear, as you go through that shape, you're always getting the same face. That cross section is constant, it does not change, hence it's a prism. And then the same with Blackpool Rock. No matter where you cut that stick of rock, it's always going to say Blackpool Rock. The cross section is constant, Therefore, it's a prism. Now, obviously, we're not going to find the volume of Billy Bears or, or Blackpool Rock. We could, but we're not going to. Okay. The way we're going to find the volume of a prism is dead, dead, dead easy. Okay. To find the volume of a prism, you need to multiply the area of that cross section doesn't change by the length that it goes back. We're going to call it the height here, but it's how far that cross section travels from front to back or Obviously, if the orientation changes from top to bottom, it's that face of that area multiplied by the height of the distance that cross section travels. Now, you can use this slide as your note. I think that's probably a good idea. Obviously, these ideas are going to stay there and you can access them from wherever you are as long as you've got internet connection. So you could use these as your notes, but I think it's beneficial for you to get from copying down your notes chart because at least then you're, you're kind of thinking about it as you're writing it. So that would be the first page of your note and we're going to do two examples and they're just going to be kind of more straightforward examples because you're going to get the practice with the harder ones when you go into class. Okay, now I'm just going to change into a different slide here. Okay, example one here, uh, nice and easy. We've got a prism, the cro the, it's a triangle prism, the cross section has an area of 40 centimetres squared and your height is nine centimeters. Okay, so to find the volume of any prism, it's the area of that cross section multiplied by that height. So here, all it is simply, is 40 multiplied by nine. Okay, and 40 multiplied by nine, we know is 360 and it's volume so it's centimetres, volume is a three-dimensional thing, so it's centimetres cubed. That's your working, that's your answer. It's as easy as that. Now, that is National 4 level. That's a bit of revision. You should be able to do that already in, in, in theory. Okay, but it's, it's just a wee reminder. I think that's quite useful. At National 5, what we're going to do is we're going to look at it with where they don't give you the area, where you have to calculate the area first. So if we go into the next slide... There's a prism again, a triangle, a prism, but this time we're not given the area, we're given the dimensions of that triangle. We know that to find the area of a triangle, it's half base times height. We're looking for the volume, it is a prism, it's got that cross, constant cross section at the front. Okay, there's my constant cross section, because as that goes from front to back, it will never change. So that's my cross section. To find the area, I'm going to do volume is equal to the area of that cross section multiplied by the height. We don't know the area, so that area there is what we have to find. Now it's a triangle, we know how to find the area of a triangle, it's half base times height. Here, the base is 5.6 and the height is 4, which is going to give us an answer of 
11.2 centimetres squared area is two dimensional so it's centimetres were a little too. Now we know what that area is so now we can use it. The area is 11.2, the height with regards to the volume is how far that cross section travels so it's going to be 11.2 multiplied by 7.2 which gives us 80.64 volume, so centimetres cubed. That's the next step, that's what we're going to have to do. Now they can give you any type of shape they want. We can find it whatever area of any shape they give us, so they could put that shape on the end of our prism and ask us to calculate the volume. It's going to involve rectangles, it's going to involve triangles is going to involve circles those are the ones that are going to be most common we'll look at circles next time in the next video but that is the kind of initial theory now you'll go to class and your teacher in that lesson you'll get a chance to expand that and look at more complicated examples as you feel more comfortable with this idea but to kind of give you a help with that there's two or three questions actually for you to try before you do that the first one Nice and easy is just looking at what we've just done. The next two is a is an extension for you. Okay, it's two questions that you can try and you can use to give you a gauge of how good you are at it. That's the kind of level we're, we're looking to get you to relatively quickly and we'll move you on past that. Okay, give them a try. Pause it now. I'm about to put up the answer so you know if you're right or wrong. But pause it and give it a wee try. And that's your answers. Okay, if there's any issues, obviously come into your class prepared and armed with questions that you can ask. But that's your first thing there, that's volume of a prism. Thank you. Thank you.